Hello and welcome back to part two of this tutorial on how to swap the CPU on your Mac Pro. As always, please take all the precautions necessary to make sure that you're not damaging any parts of your computer. So here we have the two heat sinks and they're quite dirty with the old thermal paste. And this is where that uh, Arctic Clean or uh, some of that rubbing alcohol is gonna come in handy. Uh, this is also where the Q-tips and the coffee filters are coming into play. The reason why I picked this up is because it provides a nice towel that doesn't leave any residue behind. You could use uh, some uh, some of those little uh, things they use to clean uh, glasses, but honestly, the coffee filters will work just fine. So I say, hey, you know, 80 cents for a full pack, why not? We're gonna start putting some of this uh, Arctic Clean on the old um, thermal paste, and uh, we're just gonna let it sit there for about a minute, and it's gonna dissolve the old thermal paste, and uh, you can use the Q-tip, or you can use like the coffee filter, and uh, start kind of wiping that stuff off of it. Uh, we've done a few passes of Arctic Clean and a couple passes of uh, Arctic Purifier. If you don't have any of this stuff, as I said, use uh, rubbing alcohol. And uh, as you can see, they're nice and clean and shiny. And now what we need to do is tinting the surface or prepping it. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put just a little dot of Arctic Silver right in the middle of uh, these uh, heat sinks. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use, uh, once again, a handy dandy Panera Bread card. Man, this thing comes in handy uh, way more than when I go there to get food but anyway we're gonna use it to spread uh, this little bit of uh, thermal paste around up down left right and then diagonal up down left right try to cover the entire surface of, uh, the two heat sinks we're gonna do it to one and then we're gonna do it to the other and then we're gonna take uh, the coffee filter after we're done coating the entire surface and we're just gonna wipe out any excess arctic silver that's uh, filling in all the little microscopic gaps into the metal Okay, so now that the heat sinks have been tinted, uh, we want to do the same thing to the CPUs that we're going to put into the machine. If you got uh, used CPUs from eBay, uh, you might want to uh, clean them with Arctic Clean and uh, with the Arctic Purifier. Uh, you absolutely don't want any of the Arctic Silver to reach the bottom of the chip where all the uh, pins are located. So be extra careful, uh, make sure your fingers are clean, only grab it by the sides, uh, make sure you're still grounded uh, to the chassis of the computer so that we're not accidentally shocking the chip with any static electricity. So uh, once we finish putting uh, you know, a nice even coat on top, we want to take out our uh, coffee filters and wipe out any of the excess paste out of there so that uh, what you end up is a nice matte finish on top of the chip. And uh, that's it. I think uh, we're ready to install these puppies into the computer. So we're back uh, into the motherboard and uh, we want to uh, remove the old uh, CPUs from the machine. There's one on top and one on the bottom, and uh, this is uh, done fairly easily. Uh, there's a little lever onto the side, and uh, just kind of push it down, then move it uh, slightly to the right, and open up the enclosure of the chip, and you should be able to uh, gently lift that chip out of the socket. Be extra careful that fingers are clean, that you're grounded, you know, with the anti-static uh, wrist pad, and that you're not contaminating any of the components in the uh, computer with uh, any of the thermal paste. You want to pay attention to this little arrow that's uh, on the top right corner of the chip. This is going to help you orient the uh, new chip into the same direction. There's also two little notches on the bottom that you can use uh, to make sure that you put in uh, the new CPU in right, but uh, the arrow is a nice little indicator. So just remember the arrow goes on the top right corner towards the rear of the computer. You want to gently lower the new CPU into the socket. Uh, just make sure your fingers are clean and that you're not contaminating any of the surrounding parts. And just um, gently put it in there and uh, make sure that the orientation is correct so that the arrow is in the same position as the CPU that you removed. So if you feel that the CPU is nicely seated uh, into the socket, uh, we can slowly close uh, the cage and you're done with one CPU. With the first CPU successfully swapped, we want to do the same thing to the second one. Uh, once again, we uh, push down and pull the bar out to the right and lift it. And uh, we open up the cage and uh, gently lift uh, the old CPU out, uh, making a mental note of where the arrow was pointed. And uh, we do a quick visual inspection of the uh, socket, uh, make sure that everything looks clean in there. And uh, we gently lower the new CPU in there, making sure that it's uh, oriented the same way with the arrow pointing in the same direction and we also want to make sure that it's uh, nice and properly seated into the socket and uh, we can uh, close the cage and uh, lock it down by pushing the bar down 
down and latching it back. Before we put the heat sinks back on, we want to put some thermal paste to the top of the CPUs. Arctic Silver manufacturer recommends for these particular type of CPUs to draw a line down the middle of a thermal paste about one millimeter wide all the way across and that should cover the four cores that are directly underneath that uh, metal surface. The manufacturer of Arctic Silver says it's uh, more efficient than just simply uh, putting up the thermal paste all over the top surface. Okay, so everything looks ready for us to lower the um, heat sinks back into place and tighten them back in. You also want to do a quick visual inspection of the bottom of the heat sink that's going to come into contact with the CPU and once again make sure that it's nice and clean and free of any debris. That's it, I mean we can uh, start putting this uh, machine back together. Once again you want to remember to screw in um, this uh, zigzaggy X pattern. So you start from one side and uh, then you move on to the opposite side and then you start from the other side opposite of that and then and uh, screw in the last final side opposite. And we're ready to put all the other components back together, or are we? Did we forget something? Yes, we did. We need to reconnect those uh, little thermal sensors to the motherboard. Don't forget that one is on the left of the top uh, heatsink, and the other one is actually at the very, very bottom of the computer that you can reach from the memory cage. Awesome, so now we're ready to put that uh, little uh, plastic divider back into the memory cage, and uh, you know, slowly kind of slip it back in there. Once again, there's really only one way that this guy is gonna go back can. Just be careful that you're not forcing anything, you're not uh, bending anything, and uh, you should be able to push it in until it latches onto the uh, memory cage like the way it was before. So the next component to go back in is going to be the fan assembly at the, the front of the computer. There's a little notch at the bottom that should help you slide it in. Just gently lower it back in. Once it's in, press it a couple of times, make sure that uh, that uh, plug at the very very bottom is making the contact nice and tight in there. We can now take our long uh, screwdriver with a Phillips uh, head screw, that one screw that's holding the fan assembly in place onto the motherboard. Okay, so with the memory cage still loose, uh, we should be able to slip back in the CPU cover. So make sure that everything's properly aligned. You should be able to kind of slip it back in and kind of shift things around so that uh, they lock into place. So now we're gonna tighten the screws in the memory cage back in, and this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we wanna use the um, short Phillips head screwdriver to uh, tighten up the screws at the bottom of the cage, and we wanna use the long Phillips head screwdriver to tighten up the ones at the rear of the memory cage. We can uh, slide back our um, memory uh, daughter boards uh, so that they're nice and seated. Put the hard drives back in. Uh, once again, this should be pretty straightforward and simple. Kind of slide them in and uh, push them firmly when they reach uh, the bottom to make sure that they're nice and plugged into the motherboard as well. And that's it. We put the cover back in, latch it back up, and ta-da! We're done. Hopefully we didn't screw anything up and uh, we're ready to turn on the computer and uh, see the fruits of our labor in action. After you restart your computer, you might want to get your hands on a cool little app called Temperature Monitor. And this is going to tell you how hot the temperature uh, of the cores are. And uh, it's going to let you know if uh, everything was reinstalled correctly, if the heat sinks are making full contact um, with the CPU, and most importantly, if the cores are running within the normal operating range. I wanted to run some before and after comparisons to see how much uh, speed I gained. You can see here that uh, the scores are really noticeably improved and uh, all the performance tests that I'm running show that uh, the computer is almost twice as fast as it was before, uh, which is great. I think this was a great upgrade and totally worth it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, just drop me a line here through uh, YouTube or you can go to my website www.musicbycase.com and uh, click on the contact button and uh, I'll try to answer um, your questions if I can. Best of luck and I hope your uh, CPU swap is as successful as it was for me. Thanks. <laughs>